<laughs> all right, thank you. Let's go. Okay. Um, I know, I know you all love PHP. How many people here use PHP? Excellent. That's, that's good. So this is uh, nice and applicable to a lot of you. Okay, so um, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about uh, building uh, large-scale applications with PHP. So there's some, some challenges when um, trying to scale PHP. Um, I'll talk about those briefly. Um, so I'll talk about how to compile, well, just, just the basics of, um, of compiling PHP to, hip -hop, uh, to C++ using hip-hop. And, um, and then I'll talk about some experiments with um, threading building blocks that, that, uh, that colleagues at Open Parallel have done. Okay, so um, obviously PHP has a lot of benefits to it. It's uh, very, um, very widely available, um, and lots of people know how to use it, lots of software available in it. Um, then you have problems with its runtime. Um, and there's, for, for, for a lot of parallelization problems, you want to be able to thread, and the uh, the runtime Zen has no support for that, so um, which is a shame because it's already put a lot of effort into making it all thread safe internally, uh, so that it can run, um, for instance, in, inside Apache with its um, threaded uh, uh, threaded NPM. Um, and obviously, like, okay, you, you, you've got scaling problems, and there's other languages you might want to use. You know, maybe you've got one language you decide is the one true language because it supports parallelizing. Or, or whatever it is, you know. That, but but you, in, the reality is that you can't do that because you've got you've got programmers, um, you've got software that's already written in this language, um, and you and you don't really want to have a um, big fight over which language to move to either. Um, so uh, Facebook had these problems as well, and, and so they, they came along and they came up with this idea. Well, if um, if we're using PHP, look, we've we've already made all these compromises in our language. Um, we're not. It's not really that. You know, it doesn't let us do anything crazily powerful. So um, we could actually transform a quite reasonable subset of it to C++ and then just compile that. Um, and so Hip Hop is a Facebook project to, to do just that. Um, and they use it for Facebook, so it's got to be at least uh, partially successful. Um, it, it, it's, internally, it's um, thread safe. And it uses um, Intel's thread and, threading build, building blocks for memory management. Um, yeah, sorry, my image selection's a bit poor there. Um, <laughs> So, and, and to do that, they've actually had to re-implement a lot of the extensions to PHP um, in, in a thread-safe way. So, um, as an example um, of, of the, the difference between trying um, micro-optimizing quite common functions versus uh, converting the whole thing to a C++ program and compiling it, um, we, I can just have a look at some um, Drupal uh, figures that, um, that from, from a, a bunch of people that have taken the Drupal um, core and, and tried to, uh, well, first, first of all, they, they took a function which they thought was called lots and lots, they implemented a C version of that, and then they um, thought they'd graph it. Now, the, the, the difference between the micro-optimized um, function and the main one is sort of like the difference between these very slight steps, whereas the, the ones I've circled here, um, with a very perfect circle in red, is um, is the results that come from um, the hip hop version of it. Um, so it, it, it's really it, it adds an order of well, not really an order of magnitude. It's, it's like 30 percent over the the version the version compared to the one with with all of the um, typical PHP um, acceleration things like APC added to it. So it's really. Do I know what function it was? Is that? Um, I don't offend. Um, but if it, yeah, I, I could probably find it. Um, it. Yeah, it's just some some small function. It, it called a lot. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not that familiar with the Drupal internal snow. But um, another one uh, which um, colleague Lentz will be talking about soon is um, is doing this to WordPress. Now, one, one of the things that you quite often hear about parallelization is that my well. Not, sometimes my problem doesn't suit parallelization, and in an abstract sense, there are there are some problems that don't support parallelization. But in a larger sense, you've got the questions like, does my application have any parallelizable bits in it? And the the answer, at least for WordPress, when you think, okay, this is a general blog, probably not much parallelizable, was that it there was enough there that could be um, that could be sh shredded off into into parallel loops. Um, 
even with only with only a small amount of invest investigation over the code base, um, the um, colleague found several um, several loops that didn't actually depend on like each each iteration loop didn't depend on the version of it before it. So you could use a parallel for keyword, and with the threading building blocks, they what it does is it it, it knows about how many processes there are on the system, and um, and so it's pretty good about about setting up these setting up worker threads, leaving them around so it can use them quickly because, um, and and it's not really that 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 slow to start a new thread. I think on Linux it's something like ten or twenty thousand cycles typically, um, and a teardown can be a bit more depending on how many kernel objects there are, but. It's not like, even small loops can sometimes benefit from a little bit of threading, and um, and T TBB is is gives you lots of um, lots of keywords to, to make that to make that easy. So we've had positive results in that, and there's a white paper that um, Slints will evaluate on later. So my, yeah, my point is there that it's not just a, a narrow bunch of specialist tasks like you know like weather modelling or um, or what have you that just those. Or, or breaking SHA-1 or you know, Bitcoin, that sort of thing, that, that can benefit from threading. That quite, a few, uh, quite a few things can, as long as you are using a runtime, which can do it very quickly. Like C++, you can create, or you can create and tear down threads very quickly. Um, and if, you, if you're using an interpreter, it's a lot different, because you've got a, um, lot, lots, of, um, lots of state to worry about to, to implement that thread. So they don't typically work so well. Um, but hip hop is quite an attractive target for trying th threading like this to accelerate um, lots of different applications. So, um, yeah, um, sorry, I probably went over five minutes there, but um, anyone got any comments or things to say about that? Can you still run plain PHP for testing purposes when you introduce this parallel 14? Uh, right, so the, qu the question is can you still run? Uh, regular PHP if you're using the Parallel 4 keywords. Well, um, with Parallel 4, it's very easy. If you're not, if the threading isn't there, you just use a regular for loop. Um, for for other, um, and, and, and in general, for a lot of the API, it's like that. Um, that that you, you've identified something like a sort or 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 a, a map or a filter or something like that, which. Um, you think, right, well, that, that part, I'm going to try threading that and see what performance gains I get. Um, and you don't have to change the structure of the code more. Um, more hardcore stuff, like actually um, creating new threads that kind of do their own things and communicate between each other and that sort of thing, um, that's kind of um, outside, of the, outside of the scope of what, of, of what we're trying to do because it's quite difficult to do that sort of thing. It's quite difficult to work with that kind of code. Um, and possibly you don't want to do that with the kind of applications you're doing, you're using PHP for, which is, you know, everyday applications. One short, short other question. <laughs> okay, just a quick one. How, you talk about this uh, threading system you're using, how applicable is it to, uh, to other CPU types? Is it specific for, say, Intel's particular CPUs or say can I use it on AMD or is it mm, open source mm. and so I can run it on this thing which is MIPS? Right. Yeah, so if you um, if you use the library with any of Intel's competitors processors it actually melts them. <laughs> <laughs> um, no actually it's it's um, <laughs> no it's actually it's it they haven't really done anything specific to Intel processors at all. The only thing really is that Intel processors um, have hyperthreading, and um, most other processors don't really do that. So um, that's Intel's processors are better at threading, but in, for the same amount of die space, they, they usually do more threads. Um, maybe not compared to something like crazy like Niagara, but um, it, so. But it, the, they haven't hobbled it in any way. Under the hoods, it's just it's just POSIX threads, P threads. So. Um, the only thing they're doing is they're making nice, um, they've made a nice threading API so that you can use the advantages of threading. And it's a GPL library, actually. And one thing that I just in a quick addition, um, the, the TBB library itself has kind of backends for different processor architectures, and there are actually a lot of ports for different architectures. There is um, some currently unsupported ones, which would be interesting, like ARM, but uh, there is a lot of other ones already supported. 
Right, so thank you very much, Sam. So just, um, well, thank you guys for paying attention. It's us. And uh, on Friday, the, the paper that we presented at the conference, we will present it in full with all the details and code, and we put two white papers in one. It's Friday at uh, half past 11 or something like that. It's, please check it on the website because it's, it's wrong, wrongly printed here. It doesn't appear. So, so thanks, Sam. Thank